All right, welcome everyone. We're going to get started. Thanks so much for coming today. My name is Marissa Berman. I'm the assistant director here at the, the Kufferberg Holocaust Resource Center and Archives. Thanks for joining us today on the Asian Social Justice Internship Completion Ceremony for fall 2014 semester. We had eight students this semester who met with Dr. Jimin King, the head of our uh, internship program, and learned an intensive history about this relatively unknown aspect of World War II history. Um, and they learned a lot about it, and they got this amazing opportunity to actually interview comfort women survivors via Skype in Korea. So this amazing experience about something that so few people know much about. Here at the Holocaust Center, we've been working very hard to raise awareness of this issue because so few people have heard of it. And one of the things that we've tried to do is, one, create this internship program to educate all of our students about it. But also, we've been working really hard to create a permanent exhibition here at the Kufferberg Holocaust Resource Center so that future generations and new graduates of this school can come in and learn more about what we're talking about today. So we're working really heavily on that, and we're very excited. I want to thank um, the organization CASE, the Korean American Civic Empowerment Group, who first came to the Holocaust Center and met with Dr. Flug, our past director, to raise our awareness of this issue and to raise our awareness of the fact that comfort women survivors were very quickly dying off and we had this limited amount of time to learn more about them directly from them. So very quickly, I'd like to ask um, CJ Park to come up and just say a few words and just to really acknowledge and thank him and his offices for enlightening us and for helping us to make this internship happen. So CJ, please. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Jijin Park. Uh, I'm staff attorney for the Korean American Civic Empowerment. And uh, actually, Mr. Kim, uh, Mr. Dong Chan Kim, who is our president, is supposed to come here, but he is in, in South Korea now, so I came here instead of him. <laughs> I'm really, really thank you on behalf of Korean American Civic Empowerment for, to the students who are participating in this internship, great internship program. Also, I would like to thank you, uh, Kapabog Holocaust Center, for sponsoring this uh, great program, and also uh, Queen's Community College, and uh, Assemblyman uh, Francine. Francine. <laughs> he always comes to our uh, <laughs> yes. event, and he shows his support. <laughs> When, uh, as you know, the, our program is you know, dealing with uh, historical things that happened in, in, in Asia during the World War II. And then you guys have come to our office and then you interviewed comfort home survivors in South Korea, right? And uh, we wanted to then you know, uh, we want, we found when we started this program, we found out that, that you know, the, not many things in Asia what, what happened in Asia is taught in the United States. You know, one of our high school students came to our office, they were saying this, oh, we learn, we are, we are Korean American, we are Asian, that we uh, graduated in high school, but what they learned, they, they were saying, oh, what I learned is this, you know, two things. One thing, the Pearl Harbor. And then afterwards, what they know is atomic bomb. Yeah, right. You know, whole thing is missing what happened during World War II in Asia. So we thought, oh, this is a serious problem in, in, for in, in Asian American community. So the best way to, to fix that problem is you know, having an educational program that we, we can have. So we outreach it. And then and Dr. Arthur Flu, he really, really accepted having you know, he was really excited when he heard this, and when he heard this in a program, and he is really supportive for this program. And he is retired, but he is still supporting this program, I believe. Mm -hmm. He's working. He's still working. Yes, on still this very issue. hard. <laughs> and one thing I want to ask those, you know, I mean, the, a student today who is graduating this internship program, as you maybe you are the one of the first people who know about this. In the United States. You know, last week, it was the last week or this week, only this week, 
uh, Prime Minister Abe, he personally visited uh, Israel, and then he visited, he paid a contribution to the survivors, I mean the, the victims of the Holocaust there. He visited the Holocaust Museum there, and then he prayed something. But he's missing something that, you know, he is paying tribute to that in the Holocaust so, I mean, victims, but he's, he's denying the comfort women of I mean, the issue. They're saying, oh, it's not happening. They are commercial or you know, prostitutes. We see those two things in it. Two things happen together, but at the same time, it's basically the same kind of war crime. He's acknowledging one, but he's not, he's denying the other one that they did, their government committed. So I ask those students, I mean, the students who participate in this program, be more active on this issue. Otherwise, the victims, I mean, the, 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 the fact will be, will be forgotten, and then nobody will recommend and remember them. Nobody will get any lessons from the, from the past, what happened in this generation. So I ask you to be more active, be educated, be proactive to reach your students and other friends and your family members, let them know about this, and more, pro more students be, you know, participate in this internship program maybe next semester. And thank you, and then I ask you to be more active. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite up Assemblyman Bronstein to come and say a few words. As CJ said, Assemblyman Bronstein comes to so many of our events. I think almost all of them, and we're so grateful for that and for all your time and, and effort. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. Thank you, Marissa. Uh, first, let me start by thanking uh, Queen Brown Community College and the uh, Cumberbird Holocaust Center for continuing to have programs like this. Uh, and CJ, it's, it's good to see you here. It's, uh, you know, usually we see Dong Chan, but uh, he, he's in South Korea today, and uh, thanks for representing. We appreciate all the work you do. Uh, it, it's important that you, you see the phrase, uh, history always repeats itself. I mean, you hear that phrase. And in the past, we've seen that in times of conflict, uh, certain uh, countries have engaged in war crimes. And it's important that for the future that we understand what people are capable of doing and we make sure that we don't make those same mistakes in the past. You know, even in times of conflict, we have um, international rules about things that you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to torture. Uh, you're not supposed to kill people who surrender. And, and obviously something like um, engaging in uh, rape is, is, is just unacceptable even in times of conflict. Now, uh, as CJ had pointed out, and and I want to reiterate this. The Comfort Women uh, story is something that not everybody knows about, especially here in the United States. And without acknowledging it, without talking about it, it provides an opportunity for some, especially with the, the Japanese government, to kind of sweep it under the rug and pretend it never happened. And that's what the Japanese government is doing. Uh, they try to deny it. They try to say that these women were uh, volunteering for this kind of thing. Um, and and they, they constantly try to minimize the situation. And if it's not for young people like yourselves to, to find out the truth and talk to the actual victims and, and pass it on to the next generation, uh, they, they might succeed. So it's, we really appreciate um, the work that you've done and, and the fact that you signed up for this course. Uh, and we're hopeful that moving forward, you know, you will tell people that this, you've spoken to the victims, this is real. Um, and, and hopefully we can get the message out uh, so the Japanese government is successful in uh, denying that this took place. Uh, so once again, we really appreciate it and uh, uh, we couldn't be prouder to, to have you uh, represent us in this cause. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe let's have the, the students who want to come up and we'll take a picture now with the assemblyman. Yeah, come on. We'll get up and do one, do a shot. There were many people that we want to thank that couldn't be with us today. Um, one, of course, is City Councilman Mark Weprin. Uh, thank you so much for, for sending someone along. We appreciate 
all of the work that he has done for us and contributing to, to the center and attending our events and supporting us. We wish he could be here, but of course understand, as well as New York City Councilman Peter Koo, who also was unable to attend. So we just want to thank the City Council and the Assembly and the Senate and everyone for helping t us to realize these programs and to make everything happen. So internally at the college, we're so grateful here at the Holocaust Center that we're able to produce these amazing internships and programs. So of course we want to thank Dr. Call for supporting us and uh, Vice President of Institutional Advancement, Rosemary Zins, also for supporting us and allowing us to continue on with these projects. We're just so grateful. Thank you, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> The next person I'd like to call up is Dr. Jimin Kim, who is the head of the internship program. She's been leading it since the beginning, and she's done such a fantastic job educating our students on the history of this aspect of World War II that many people don't know about. And I'm going to turn it over to her. So thank you so much, Dr. Kim. Thank you. Um, thank you all for coming um, to our event, our final presentation. And um, I appreciate for your attention and your support for our program. And um, what you are about to see today is how our, how our society and our young generation are paying attention to human rights issues and uh, especially his lessons from history for the better future. So this is our fourth semester of this internship. Um, we, uh, so far, we have had up about 40 student interns. And uh, this semester, we have eight, intern, uh, eight interns. And I found them uh, one of the most diligent, hardworking, and creative student groups uh, so far. And uh, many of them were not familiar with the comfort women issue or war crimes in East Asia during the Second World War in the beginning, but uh, they learned a lot about the history. And after the interview, most importantly, they um, became delegates of the Comfort Women survivors. And they agreed on to, uh, to work um, to help their, the survivors' cause to restore their dignity and human rights that they deserve. Um, the Comfort Women, Comfort Women system is the largest case of human trafficking in the world history that a government was involved. And uh, even though we have uh, documentations and documents and uh, testimonies, uh, the Japanese government has not recognized the government involvement in the system and um, uh, refused to take responsibility. Um, but the survivors has, have asked for one thing, a sincere and uh, official apology from the Japanese government. And uh, our students, after the interview, agreed to support those survivors. And they have worked on projects as ways to spread the word to those who are not familiar with this issue. So uh, they brought many fresh ideas, and uh, I am thrilled to share the result of their projects today with you. And I hope our students' effort helped the survivors to uh, restore their dignity and rights that uh, they deserve in a short time. Uh, so I will call uh, group one, uh, four students, Rui, Shade, Chaudhry, and Jonathan to the front and uh, ask them to speak themselves about their, their experience of the program. So those four students uh, had interview with Mrs. Yu, uh, a comfort woman survivor in Korea. She's living in the house of sharing in South Korea. And I'll... Uh, show you the video clip of their interview. Mm -hmm. 
그냥 끌려가고 저 보기 사람이 저녁에도 왔다 갔다 하고 그런 이유지니까 그냥 그 팥죽소에 팥죽소로 많이 끌려갔다가 거기서 면, 이제 면사모소가 그 이유니까 그 이튿날 확인하고 서림이 그냥 끌려갔죠. 근데 집에서는 몰랐다고 그래요. 그러고 갔다 와. 그러면 나중에 어머니랑은 못 만나셨어요? 네. 아... 이제 그 이안소라는 <웃음> 거기는 간판, 간판도 안 걸었어. 그리고 이 천막에다가 천막 텐트에다가 양자 이 가운데 말이지 사람이 다니고 그 다음에 <웃음> 그 저기 뭐 양자구로 방그 다단에 다단에 있잖아요 그거를 이제 놓고서 거기서 이제 한 사람씩 보조하고 아침이면 부르고 거기서 이제 이제 <웃음> 군인들이 오면은 이제 뭐 받았죠. 그거는 사람이 있을 수 없는 문제라고요. 사람한테 그렇게 하고 안 가면 죽, 죽으니까 말안 들으면 그냥 죽어, 죽, 죽여버리니까 죽 무서워서 그냥 시키는 대로 했지만 은 지금 생각하면 기가 막히죠. 뭐. 이런 사람들이 너무너무 우리 한국한테 못되게 굴고 말이야. 다 젊은 사람들 다 갖다 죽이고 먹을 거다 뺏어가고 그래 놓고 저기, 저기 뭐야 아베 총리 말이지 아니라고 그래고 뭘다 줬다고 그래고 진짜 아베 총리 그러면 안 돼요 하나님이 계신데 하나님이 심판하실 텐데 무섭지도 하나님이 무서운 줄은 몰라요 yes. uh, So we had uh, four interviewers for Mrs. Yu So I will ask each of the students about their impression and their thoughts on, on the program and interview. Rui, could you start? Sure, What so was the program or the interview? Yes, uh, both. Okay. Well, um, I don't know if this microphone worked properly. The program itself was very stimulating, actually. It wasn't anything you could find off um, Huffington Post or online website or newspaper. This was actual documentation of women being violated or people being violated in general. And that's something very rare to come across. Um, for the interview, when w it first took place, I was a bit nervous as well as all of my peers over here to ask questions because you don't know how much these women have been through. They're nearly 80 years old now, so if you take that in time, they were born in about 1930, 1940. That's a really long time. Well, 1930, 1940, around there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not very good at math. But um, you, it's hard to realize the situation because we live in such a great democracy where if I shove this guy, you know, <laughs> He has the he has his own right he has his own right to mediation. We have our human rights over there. Imagine you being 13, not being able to go to school, being taken from your home, and saying, "All right, you're gonna serve 50 minutes a day on this bed, and you know you gotta take a bunch of these pills." You being held against your own will. It's definitely something I feel we could translate better into better than New York Times, better than any news outlet for the world to hear because World War II, we know about the Holocaust already and that was a terrible ordeal and we're still, we're still figuring stuff out about that. You find neo-Nazis living in America every day. We don't know the depth of this right now because there are Japanese soldiers that have admitted and you can see in the interview, the woman, the woman is obviously very disheartened about this whole situation because Well, she she just doesn't. She feels kind of crazy. No one, no not no one. The Japanese government is admitting to it, so it's tough. Um, not much to say about that. It's hard. Uh, Rui, could you explain about your oh, project? Oh, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so this project, I made a website, but just to clarify, this website. Um, I like to call it Professor Kim. Professor Kim told me the last student that did a website only held it for a year and it's expired now. 
As you can see, I set up uh, the link as ASJI, that's Asian Social Justice Internship, because I couldn't find a better name. But um, basically, this is for, this is a website for activism, basically. There are a lot, there are a lot of, um, not even Korean women, Filipino, Taiwanese, we've learned all about it, the rape of Nanking. There are people who've been through tragedies and they have no voice, so this is kind of a foundation to give them a voice. And um, we're st I'm starting out with what we've done in this internship for Korean Comfort Women. You can see a link right there, a YouTube link to our uh, group video. It's an interview uh, we've done with students. I'll explain more of that later on. I'll be presenting it. And there is a button to sign a position because right now, currently, while I was making this website, um, it got crashed a couple of times because I asked someone to help me out with it. And he had friends who were really upset about this ordeal because there is a Comfort Woman statue, I'm pretty sure in Jersey. I f I, there was so much argument about it. But um, the Japanese are going to the White House to have it uh, taken down. And it's becoming a whole big issue that's sort of bubbling up right now. So it's bound to implode soon. So. This is pretty much early, early preparation for what's going to what's gonna go down in the next uh, couple of years. Um, I also have a tribute, but I don't know if we can find that button, actually. Can you go up? Other way. A tribute, right there. Um, that's just a story of, uh, for the woman we interviewed. The site's mobile friendly, it's tablet friendly, it's, I don't care how wide your desktop screen is, it could be 36 inches, it, it'll still fit the format. <laughs> Definitely come take a look at it, um, even if you just want a quick read, this is not more than three minutes, it lets you know. Next time you, someone brings it up in conversation, you're well prepared, you can utilize this. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Jonathan. Um, when I started this Asian social, social justice program, uh, I, I came for a, a fresh taste of knowledge. Uh, but you know, I soon realized that I should be sympathetic towards these women because I do, like Richie here said, uh, we do have rights here in America that we sometimes take for granted. Uh, like we have freedom uh, to vote and freedom to do whatever we want and we can walk the streets safely without having to worry about <laughs> any kind of violence or rape but sometimes it does happen uh but we can we can always go to court and figure these things out uh now in this program i've i've come to learn a lot of things that uh these japanese soldiers uh have taken many women but uh 80 percent of these women were made up of korean women so that's what we specifically learned uh and i i constantly tell other people such as my friend's uncle because i've I go over his house every <laughs> every time, and I constantly have battles with him because he thinks he knows more than I do. But age doesn't mean you you know more. It just it just means you're older. <laughs> um, but I mean, it depends where you get your sources from. It's it's all about ignorance and how much you should fight it. Uh, he he says that these women were paid, but I told him I spoke to them personally. And I know what they're what they've gone through, and I uh, I did feel the pain, especially in the interview. Uh, she she surprised me because in the end she uh, she told me that uh, this is still going on in the world because we're not learning from the past, specifically with her situation. Uh, so therefore, now going on to my project, I'm sorry. Uh, I wrote a I wrote a poem, uh, okay? yeah, <laughs> which I will read to you right now. World War II is big on the Holocaust, but never big on the Korean women who were lost. Betrayal, disgust, and torture are all that can be said, with all the anguish and tears that were shed. The Japanese soldiers took their pick, while all the Korean teens would run away quick. Korean women were enforced sex slaves, and they were supposed to do it until they reached their graves. There will come a day of compensation when Japan apologizes as a nation. Only time can tell when, what really lies ahead, for the cases 
have already been pled. Korean women today finally have a voice where they can they can call, they can finally all rejoice. Yui Nam is brave for answering what she had been asked. Uh, she fed the ignorant with mindful words of her past. Uh, okay. Just, just, <laughs> thank you. Just very quickly, um, I, I, the way I came up with this poem was uh, I was thinking generally because I should think of all the Korean women and also the women that I interviewed. So what I did was I, I made the uh, general statement because I, I like something that's terse. This way it's uh, easier to uh, just listen to and pick up on. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chowdhury, and when I first started this program, I didn't really know anything about Korean history or anything because we really didn't learn that in school. I've taken a lot of classes in high school and whatnot. I've also taken AP, AP U.S. history, but that really didn't teach anything because, you know, in American scope and the whole Eurocentric ideas of, like, America only knows this and forget everything else that happened in Asia. So. But when I first came here, I yeah, I didn't know anything, and the first time I realized like this is a big deal was when we learned about Project 731 when it wasn't just about women, it was about humans in general and how they were taken off the streets and they were used for human experimentation and they would be dissected alive pretty much. And when I first learned that in Dr. Jimin's lecture, I was really squeamish about it and I really, I actually did want to throw up. and. And that's when it kind of hit me, like, this is a big deal, and why haven't I learned this? This is actually a huge violation in in the rules of war, if there is any. And when we first interviewed the comfort woman, Yuhi Nam, she was, I was actually really scared. I didn't know how she would reciprocate and how it would all work out and what I'd learn. But then we did learn a lot, and she did... She was very outspoken. She had no problem telling us what was going on and her story, and which was pretty amazing. And the whole like, the whole thing was really was really personal at that point because I did not think that we would actually learn anything from the actual person who was victimized from World War II. And I guess yeah, it was really surreal. <laughs> but. And yeah, and in the end, she told us that she's 87 years old and she has cancer, and that's when it really hit me that we really don't have time, and you know, we're younger, we're the younger generation, and that we should actually take what we learn from her and actually send it because there really is no time for her to do it herself. And for my individual project, I made a painting and I called it Deflower because my insp in my inspiration for this was um, in a lot of videos that we learned in Jim Means lectures they had psychological therapy paintings and they all look like this where they they take a piece from their past and make it something really surreal i guess and um what I, what i did was the the girl in the top is her old past where she wasn't deflowered yet and then like the one in the bottom is her and how she's trying to grab on to to her past self and go back to what was before she was taken away as a comfort woman. And the flowers in the bottom, I can't, you can't really see well in the picture, but like they're represented by the, the Korean flower, which is the Sharon flower, and the Japanese sakura, and that's how I represented both nations in it. And the reason why I want to do a, a painting to, to begin with is that like, this is an international project and you know, a lot of times communication is a barrier because of all the different languages you speak, like Korean and English. So I figured that if I did a painting, maybe the the message would break those barriers. And because I think that art is more more universal. Thank you. Hello. Um, so my name is Shade, and the reason I decided to participate in this internship is because over the summer I had went to South Korea and studied abroad, and when I came back home I didn't want to just forget about Korea and not think about them again, and I didn't know much about the history, so I thought when 
Dr. Fluke told me about this program. I thought it would be a good opportunity to learn more. So I applied and I got into the internship. And I have to say, I didn't know much about Korean comfort women before, and I learned a lot about them through this internship. And a lot of what I learned kind of broke my heart. As a female, it hurt to know that they had to go through these things, and I don't, and I don't think it's right for anyone or any type of any human being to go through these things. So I was, I was, I felt like I gained a lot from this internship. And for my interview, um, speaking to Hinam Yu was it was surreal because I didn't think I would have that opportunity ever to be able to speak to a survivor of this one-on-one -on -one or well with my peers and get to get her side of the story and not just read about it in a textbook or just listen to lectures it made it more personal being able to hear her story um, from her for my project I decided to do a blog post for my blog that I could so it would always be there and other people would be able to see it over time and I'll just read a short piece from it um, her name is Hina Myu and she resides at the house of sharing in South Korea she is currently 87 years old and is suffering from cancer she was in primary school when she was taken from her home in South Korea and brought to Japan when asked about her experiences she said we did what we were told because we were afraid to die she shared, now that she, she shared that now she thinks that it was ludicrous. During the interview, she said this, we are different, we look different, but we have emotions. People say that things like this are normal in warfare, but this is unacceptable. I appreciate these words because I felt that they not only described the situation she went through, but they described the reality of what many people go through across the world on a daily basis. By the end of this interview, Hina Myu became one of my personal heroes. Maybe it's because I got to hear her story directly from her, but she inspired me. To know that she experienced all these horrible things and still found it in her heart to live happily, she taught me a lesson I will never forget. It saddens me to think that others will not be able to hear her story and she could be forgotten in years to come. There are only 55 known survivors left in Korea and they are all terribly ill. Soon they will not be here to share their stories firsthand. I learned plenty about this issue and I felt compelled to share it with all who would listen. I hope this inspires you to learn more about the comfort women of Korea and inspires you to find a way to help them. In closing, I want to share this, this quote that Yu Hina Myu said. She said, I lived through the turmoil of life. I am strong. Thank you. Rui, Jonathan, Chaudhry, and Shade. I will, yes. I will invite group two to the front. <coughs> Benjamin, Songmin, Susan, and Natasha had interview with Mrs. Uh, Oksan Lee. I will show you the uh, short video, video clip first. Yes, please. 그때 누구 잡아갔겠어요? 일본 사람이 잡아갔지. 그게 뭐 순차였어요? 아니면 헌병이었어요? 저러 끌어간 사람은 일본 사람이 하나, 한국 사람 하나. 이제 둘이 잡아오고 했는데 군인인지 경찰인지 모르겠어요. 입어 달아맞고 소리 친다고 손을 든다고 손도 빗거려 매고 발 굴른다고 발도 빗거려 매고 응. 이렇게 해갔어요 일본 사람이 지금 말하기를 할머니들 우리가 강제로 끌어 안 가고 
개발로 돈 벌러 갔다 이렇게 말하지 우리가 돈을 얼마나 벌었습니까 양소가 아니라 사람 잡는 도살장이에요 그게 생각해보자 아들 다 걸어갔는데 어떻게 죽였어요 다 쏘아 죽이고 찔러 죽이고 째 죽이고 다 이렇게 죽였지 그게 이양소입니까 도살장이지 Um, when you were in the comfort station, did you think you would ever be able to leave? So, Song Min, could you start? What are your thoughts after the, the program and the interview? Um, oh, that's loud. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Song Min. Um, my name is also Kevin. Um, when I first started this internship, um, I, because I'm Korean, I came from Korea, I kind of knew about the issue, but I didn't know specific details or factual uh, evidences because I came here at, uh, when I was like in elementary school and we didn't learn history very intensively back then. Um, so I guess um, the stuff that I learned uh, during internship is something that was also new to me as well. Um, but for me personally, during interview, um, when Miss E, our interviewee, when she um, said about you know her life in comfort station and her testimonies, um, it came very personal because it feels like uh, my grandma just talking about her life uh, because I can understand their language and I think there's much more than a just regular English translation that we couldn't just um, capture. So. Um, it was very personal, um, and a feeling that I had towards Japanese government initially was, okay, they, they did something bad, so they should get punished. But throughout the internship, I think I just had, I think I developed that kind of neutral point of view where I don't try to get so emotional, but I want to do something that's more, um, I guess, fact-based, fact-based, and uh, something that's much more, something that deals with history much more. Um, and a lot of things that we, uh, we kind of see in media um, are not that eye-opening and not that shocking until you really talk with one of the uh, survivor. And I think that was the, the one of the valuable experience that I had throughout the internship as well. Um, yeah, um, so basically, uh, I did a writing. Uh, this is supposed to be um, um, op-ed opinion editorial piece for a local newspaper called the Korea Times. Uh, I first wrote in Korean and I translated back to English so you guys can understand, obviously, not all of you guys understand Korean, right? Um, 
<laughs> okay. Um, so I'll read some parts of it. Um, as a young student who came from South Korea, I only knew the issue of comfort women at its surface without knowing the exact history. However, from Queensborough Community College, I get to have an internship in Asian social justice program. At the age of 15 and 16, these young women had, had to face sexual harassment, rape, and an opium addiction because of cruel Japanese actions during World War II. During an interview with one of the survivors, uh, I witnessed a survivor who showed a scar, scars from Japanese soldiers, a survivor who described the barrack as a slaughterhouse and a survivor who kept having nightmares from her, from unforgettable experience of her life. When I heard her words, a sense of sorrow and despair overwhel overwhelmed my emotion because I, didn't, I couldn't give any practical help and aid to interviewees. What we really have to fear in the future is not the foreign countries that try to manipulate what they have done, but us who ignore the value of our history. I want young, today's young generation to remember our root and hear different voices across our nation. Thus, I wish a painful piece of history such as Cup for Women issue not only get recognized among our father's generation, but motivates us to learn and strive to share historical legacies. Um, I think as a Korean, I, see, I have a lot of friends who are Korean Americans and they're not really, uh, they don't know about this kind of issue. So I think it'll be great for each one of us who, are, who volunteer as an intern uh, we we'll, can reach out and do, you know, really do something called social activism where we can aw uh, raise, raise awareness and just simply reach out to uh, students, you know, who don't know about these facts. Uh, thank you. Um, my name is Benjamin Greenberg. I'm a freshman here. And uh, I signed on to the internship because I wanted the experience of working in an internship um, I thought that would be a really good experience to have. And uh, I didn't know much about the topic at all when I started, but uh, I was surprised by a lot of the things I learned here. Um, I didn't know about a lot of the things, such as the massacres in China or um, Unit 731, which was where the Japanese did experiments on uh, prisoners and people that they captured. Um, and I feel like we we do learn a lot about you know how bad germany was during world war ii and even we even learn a bit about how uh the soviet union was during world war ii and afterwards and but with japan the most things we know about are pearl harbor and uh how they kept american prisoners but we don't learn that much about what was going on in asia and uh what other asian people were experiencing during world war ii so it was really interesting to learn about that and um, interviewing, we interviewed. Uh, yeah, she. It was very interesting to interview her. Um, I think we saw her in a video that we watched. So it was very weird. It's you see somebody in a video, you learn about them. It's different when you're actually speaking to them. And uh, I liked having that opportunity. Um, and for my project, I did. Um, I did a drawing. Uh, I purposely just drew, well, I tried to make it her. I didn't, I don't know what she looked like when she was young, but I, I purposely made the picture only of her because I didn't want any, uh, any pictures of uh, soldiers or what the comfort stations looked like because I feel like when we learn about these things, we learn about the numbers and we can't forget that these are people who these are happening to, you know, names and faces. So I wanted to make it about a specific person and their story. And uh, on her dress, I tried to draw the things that she experienced. I drew soldiers and a truck and uh, a comfort station. And that's how I tried to tell her story, uh, not through anything else that was happening in the picture. Hi, uh, my name is Susan Furman. Uh, like many of my peers, when I first heard about the internship, I had no idea what a comfort woman was. Um, also, when I first heard about comfort women and an issue that was occurring, sorry, <laughs> the issue that was occurring and you know occurred during World War II, I wasn't really knowledgeable on the subject. So 
I was like, oh, let me just try it. And also, once I heard about these women, I was fascinated. Like, I wanted to talk to them in person, like we did with the interview. I am really fascinated with like human nature, how we function, why we do what we, uh, why we do the things we do. So, when I was looking, I was really looking forward for the interview. So that's my, that was my favorite part of the internship. Now, that's why I decided to do my indiv individual project on her story, which. I wrote, <laughs> I wrote a story called "Where Have Their Stories?" Where have their stories gone? And it's basically my experience interviewing Oxen Yi. And when I interview her, um, she was obviously really overwhelmed and she was really bitter about what happened in the past. So in my story, I wanted to have give her like if I was gonna write part fictional story and part like what she had been through, um, because at least in my story, she would have had a happy ending. Not like her life right now but I thought that that wouldn't have been really realistic because thinking about her and all that you know she, sh she suffered she wasn't really able to have a happy ending so I'll read you a little bit what she had what um, she had said in the interview like about after she got she was be she was being uh, rescued so here's an expert <laughs> by the time I was rescued I had spent 60 years in China my parents supported me and said when I returned to Korea, there weren't many relatives left. I didn't want to come back at first. I had the name Comfort Woman plastered over my face. I was a beggar for a while, but in 2006, I came into the house of sharing. The Japanese government to this day denies of our existence. We tried compensating us by giving us money. Some did take the money, I didn't. Now, they're trying to change the story, saying we, paid we were paid prostitutes. They're still looking down at us. Every nation has taken responsi responsibility of war, of war crimes. Why can't Japan do the same? I want everyone to know this atrocity. Maybe we can bring about change when everyone is informed. I am ashamed of what happened, but I put that aside for you. That was an expert of what Oxen Yi said in her interview. Also, what I plan to do with my story, like I'm gonna give you guys a copy of it too so you can read it in its entirety. I also plan on putting in like a Facebook post or any social media because believe it or not, we have a lot of power in what we say in social media. So I'll try to share it as much as I can. So thank you. Hi, I'm Natasha. Um, the best part of this internship was interviewing them because you get to hear their side of the story. And it's very heartfelt when it comes from that person with such a deep experience. The person that we interviewed, she shared her story. And she's so strong to actually come forth with that. And I decided to do a flyer to represent how her story was. So. Her name was Oksani. She's 87 years old right now. Um, she was 14 years old at the time when she was taken, and she had to serve 40 to 50 men a day, which she described the station as a slaughterhouse. Um, many comfort women didn't even survive this horrific incident, and her story was she couldn't even go back home. She had to stay in China because of lack of money. And the only thing she wants is, a resp um, is an apology for those responsible. We also learned about biological warfare and Unit 731, which the Japanese injected pathogens into humans and crops and Waited, observed them until they died. So that's really tragic. Um, the flyers are distributed. You can read a little bit more about it. So that's it. All right. Well, I want to thank all of you guys. That was amazing. I hadn't really known what your projects were going to be. So this was really exciting for me to see and to learn along with everyone else. I think it's safe to say you've all become agents for social change. I mean, it, it happened yeah. with what you've com <laughs> what you produced. Um, if I can quote Dr. Flug, one line he always would say at the end of these internship programs are about how the interns are insurance policies. And we know that from talking to the Holocaust survivors and from even hearing it from the comfort women survivors, they're not afraid about dying. 
they're afraid that their stories will be lost, that no one will know what happened to them. And you are insurance policies because I know that you're not going to forget this experience. It's going to come up. You're going to tell your children. Somehow it's going to come up. You know, and you're going to tell other people, you're going to tell family and friends. And just telling is fighting the battle. So we're doing what we can in some way. So you should be really proud of all you've accomplished. And all of these things are going to live on. So maybe some of the artwork will be in our exhibit here. These sites exist already, and we're going to try and help promote them. So congratulations, and thank you to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Tim.